At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, including the exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats featuring art such as the memorable Dacon Blackblade, so get yours today. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern, and this week we're taking a look at a standard deck built around Muldrotha, the Gravetide. So this is going to be a Sultai value deck with lots of 1 and 2 offs to enable Muldrotha and uh, kind of grind our opponent out. So first off, let's take a look at Muldrotha the Gravetide, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary creature that says during each of your turns you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. So those permanent types include lands, creatures, artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers. So there's a lot of variety, which is why you see all these 1 and 2 offs in the deck. That way when we do have a Muldrotha in play, we get to maximize the number of permanents we get to play out of the graveyard. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have 3 copies of Fatal Push, just to have some cheap removal so we can survive until the late game, where we can finally start grinding our opponent out. We also have a few 2-drop creatures, 4 copies of Dusk Legion Zealot, which is a 2-mana 1-1, one, one, that when it enters the battlefield we lose 1 life and draw a card, so this helps us set up our hand nicely, and it's also a nice target to return from the graveyard, since we get to draw a card again. And same goes for Merfolk Branchwalker, 2-mana two 2-1, two that when it enters the battlefield we can explore, so take a look at the top card of our library, if it's a land, we can put it into our hand, if it's a non-land card we can decide whether or not to put it in the graveyard, or keep it on top of our library, and then the Branchwalker gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and next up we have one copy of Aethersphere Harvester, which counts as an artifact for Muldrotha purposes. So 3 mana for a 3-5 flying vehicle. The crew cost is only 1, so we can even crew it with a Dusk Legion Zealot. And when the Harvester enters the battlefield, we also gain 2 energy, and we can spend an energy to give the Harvester a lifelink, so shines against the more aggressive decks. Then we also have two copies of Skittering Surveyor, 3 mana for 1-2, when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for a basic land and put it into our hand, so it helps us fix our mana and make sure we keep hitting our land drops until we can cast our more expensive spells. And again those enter the battlefield abilities combine nicely with Muldrotha, as you get immediate value when you return those creatures from the graveyard. And of course all these random creatures also help protect our life total and the few planeswalkers that we have in the deck as well. And the Scattering Surveyor counts as both an artifact and a creature, so we can kind of choose as uh, which of those to get it back, since if we do, for example, have a Harvester in the graveyard as well, we can both return the Surveyor and the Harvester by choosing Creature for the Surveyor. Next up we have two copies of Champion of Wits, which is a nice graveyard enabling card. Three mana for 2-1, when it enters the battlefield we get to draw cards equal to its power, and then discard two cards. And it also has Eternalize for 7 mana, so we get a 4-4 that lets us draw 4 cards and then discard 2 cards which is a very powerful effect, and this also just helps us set up our graveyard, make sure we keep hitting land drops, and helps us smooth out our draw. Then we have two copies of Benefaction of Ronas, which is another graveyard enabling card, three mana for sorcery that makes us reveal the top five cards of our library. We can choose an enchantment and or a creature from among those to put into our hand, and the rest goes into the graveyard. And of course putting cards into the graveyard is nice with Muldrotha, Benefaction also helps us find Muldrotha if we don't have a copy already, and we also have a few enchantments in the deck, to combine with the Benefaction of Ronas to maybe get us a nice 2 for 1. Next up we have two copies of Thrashing Brontodon, which is also great in this deck. 3 mana for a 3-4 creature that we can pay 1 mana to sacrifice him to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So of course any creature that we can easily sacrifice is nice with Muldrotha, since we can easily return it from the graveyard, and there's a lot of enchantments and artifacts running around in standard nowadays, so it's just a nice creature to have access to. Then we have one copy of Journey to Eternity, and we've already featured a Journey to Eternity deck on the channel before, and it combines very nicely with Thrashing Brontodon, since you can just enchant the Thrashing Brontodon, target the Journey to Eternity with the Brontodon's ability, and then the Journey to Eternity will transform into Cave of Eternity before it gets destroyed. And then of course Cave to Eternity synergizes very well in this deck, where we're putting a lot of creatures in the graveyard, and this gives us some great inevitability. And of course just putting the Journey to Eternity on one of our two drops, and then uh, chum blocking with them to transform the Journey to Eternity into Cave of Eternity is also a valid strategy and it's an additional enchantment that we can find with Benefaction of Ronas, and an enchantment that we can maybe get back from the graveyard with Muldrotha. Next up we have two copies of Ravenous Chupacabra, a nice removal spell on a stick, for mana for 2-2. When it enters the battlefield we get to destroy a creature an opponent controls, and of course getting the Chupacabra back from the graveyard is also great value. Next up we have one copy of a Rite of Belzenlock, a 4 mana saga enchantment from Dominaria. So the first chapter when it enters the battlefield lets us create two 0-1 black cleric creature tokens. 
on the second turn we get to do the same and then the third chapter makes a 6-6 black demon creature token with flying and trample that says at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice another creature if you can't this creature deals six damage to you but of course you can just sacrifice those cleric tokens pretty easily and this also gives us a sacrifice outlet to sacrifice some of our other creatures to get them back from the graveyard with Muldrotha. And speaking of other sangas, we have one copy of The Eldest Reborn, 5 mana for another enchantment saga. The first chapter makes each opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, so it's still effective against planeswalker heavy control decks. The second chapter makes each opponent discard a card, and the third chapter makes us return a creature or planeswalker from any graveyard into play under our control. So that's another very powerful saga. And of course all the sagas combine nicely with the Muldrotha, since after the third chapter they all go to the graveyard, and then you can easily get them back with Muldrotha. Then we also have one copy of Liliana, that's Majesty, since it's nice to have a few planeswalkers in your Muldrotha deck, since it's another permanent type you can return from the graveyard. 5 mana for a 5 loyalty planeswalker, plus 1 makes a 2 to zombie creature token, and also mills the top 2 cards of our library into our graveyard, further fueling our graveyard for Muldrotha, which is nice. The minus 3 returns a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield, so it's another nice ability to combine with cards like Ravenous Chupacabra, for example, and our other Enters Battlefield ability creatures. And it also turns the creature into a zombie, which is relevant for the minus 7 ultimate, destroying all non-zombie creatures. Then we have another saga enchantment in the form of the Mending of the Monaria. The first two chapters make us put the top two cards of our library into our graveyard, and then we can return a creature card from our graveyard back to our hand. And then the third chapter makes us return all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield. And that of course synergizes nicely with all our self-mill effects that we already have, and with our various graveyard synergies. Then we also have one copy of Verger's Gearhulk, a 5 mana 4-4 four four with Trample, that counts as both an artifact and a creature, which is relevant for Muldrotha, and when it enters the battlefield, we get to distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among creatures we control in any configuration, so another very powerful enters the battlefield ability. Then we also have one copy of the Scarab God, which doesn't really need an introduction, and combines nicely in any deck that's putting a lot of creatures in its own graveyard. We also have one copy of Vraska Relic Seeker as an additional Planeswalker, 6 mana for a 6 loyalty Planeswalker that can make 2-2 pirate creature tokens with Menace, can also destroy artifacts, creatures or enchantments, and then the ultimate is also pretty game winning. Then 3 copies of Muldrotha, which is the build around card in the deck, and then finally 2 copies of Walking Ballista, another artifact creature for Muldrotha purposes that also kind of acts as a mana sink and a removal spell that also plays nicely against aggressive decks with a lot of one toughness creatures and of course looping back walking ballista out of the graveyard with Muldrotha is a fine win condition as well then going over the mana base you'll notice we're mainly a black green deck just splashing blue for a handful of cards so black green are going to be the most represented colors in our mana base we've got four copies of blooming marsh which enters the battlefield untapped if it's one of our first three lands then we have a whole bunch of check lands from dominaria as well four copies of woodland cemetery two copies of Drowned Catacomb, and two copies of Hinterland Harbor. Then we also have two copies of Fetid Pools, which combines nicely with our check lands, as it both counts as an island and a swamp. Enters the battlefield tapped, but we can also cycle it for two mana, so also combines pretty nicely with the Muldrotha, as does Evolving Wilds, a land we can sacrifice to search up a basic land and put it into play tapped, so it helps us fix our mana, and it's also a nice value card with Muldrotha to get it back later from the graveyard. And then of course a bunch of basic lands to get with Evolving Wilds. And we do want a lot of basics also, so that the Evolving Wilds can keep finding more basics once we have a Muldrotha in play. So we have three copies of Forest, three copies of Swamp, and one copy of Island. Then going over the sideboard, we have two copies of Duress against control decks, an additional Fatal Push against aggressive creature decks, two copies of Sorcerer's Spyglass, which is pretty versatile, can shut down opposing Planeswalkers, Gate to the Afterlife, and so forth. Two copies of Negate against control decks or other combo decks. One Aethersphere Harvester if we're up against aggressive decks. Another Thrashing Brontodon if we need to blow up more artifacts or enchantments. We have a Filigree Familiar which is nice against the more aggressive decks, gaining us some life. We can chum block with it, draw a card, and then later maybe get it back from the graveyard with Muldrotha as both an artifact or a creature. We have a Yahannis Expertise as our sweeper of choice, which also lets us cast a 3 mana card from our hand for free. And we have a Vraska's Contempt for Planeswalkers or Recursive Creatures. Another Ravenous Chupacabra against big creature decks. A Nissa Vital Force which shines against the more controlling decks and also plays well with our graveyard themes. And then a second copy of the Eldest Reborn which also shines against the more controlling Planeswalker heavy decks. 
All right, so that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. And this hand is probably keepable. Uh, double Muldroth is a little awkward, but we can discard one to the Champion of Wits. And we have Fatal Push to keep us alive, and then Champion of Wits to help us smooth out our draw. I think I will lead with Evolving Wild still over Swamp in case we draw a 2-drop here. And then I probably want to get either a Forest or a Swamp. And I think I'll go with a Forest so the Harbor comes into play untapped. Alright, turn 1 Lenore Elves. Can still just fail push that on turn 2. So get a Forest. And untap. And I'm just gonna fatal push this right now. Say go. And next turn play Champion of Wits. Alright, green white. Is it some sort of mid-range deck? It looks like it. Um yeah, don't mind just running out the champion here. And then for sure we can discard one Buldrotha. And then could discard a Walking Ballista as well, keep the Chupacabra and keep the land so we can cast Muldrotha, seems fine. And this also puts an artifact in the graveyard for later. Alright, Steel Leaf Champion, so glad we held on to the Ravenous Chupacabra here. Don't get to play it this turn unfortunately, but uh, we will be able to play it next turn. And let's see here, is there a reason to play one land over the other? I guess there's a small chance we end up cycling the Fetid Pools. So I'll run out the Evolving Wilds for now and say go. The Evolving Wilds can also potentially enable Fatal Push, which our opponent could consider. But we're definitely just going to get a Swamp with the Evolving Wilds. And then next turn we likely just play Chupacabra and a tapped Fetid Pools. Set up for Muldrotha if we can find a land. And this Mending of Dominaria is also going to be pretty good. Letting us get back maybe a Walking Ballista. Steel Leaf gets in for 5. We'll take it since we can't block. And another Steel Leaf Champion. Alright. Let's get a Swamp. Untap and find a Branch Walker, but we're just gonna play this Chupacabra. And kill one of the Steel Leaf Champions. And then we might as well attack with the Champion of Wits since we can't block with it anyways. So kill that one. Attack for two. And then hopefully we can uh, land this Muldroth and our opponent can't exile it somehow. Otherwise this uh, Steel Leaf Champion could be an issue. If the Merfolk Branchwalker can find a non-land card with the Explorer, we can chum block the Steel Leaf Champion for a turn. And then maybe we can get the Mending of Dominaria going as well. Alright, Rishkar Pima Renegade. Can pump the Steel Leaf Champion some more. And gets in for 6. Alright, Dusk Legion Zealot means we can Branchwalker plus Zealot here. So let's play Branchwalker. Hopefully find a land. Fatal Push instead. It's not a bad one, although it doesn't let us um, kill any of the opponent's creatures without enabling Revolt first, but we can Chum Block with the Branchwalker to accomplish that. So I think we keep that on top. And then play the Zealots, which draws us into the Fatal Push. And then... If your opponent doesn't want to attack into the Branch Walker to enable Fatal Push, that's fine. We could also attack ourselves with Champion of Wits and Chupacabra. That might actually be fine. Since that also helps us enable Revolt for Fatal Push. And if your opponent has Blossoming Defense, I would rather make this attack on our turn as opposed to the opponent's turn. Although I guess if we need to enable Revolt, it doesn't really matter since we can only Fatal Push after damage. Fatal Push is also definitely a reason to sometimes hang on to your Evolving Wilds for later, since Evolving Wilds is an easy way to enable Revolt, so we can kill those 3 and 4 mana creatures. So in this spot, I guess we shouldn't have played the Dusk Legion Zealot before making this attack, since now our opponent knows we have the Fatal Push in hand, and we kind of want them to block here so we can kill the Steel Leaf Champion. And our opponent does go for the block on the Chupacabra, which is the one we want to get in the graveyard here. Alright, let's uh, try and kill the champion, see if they have the Blossoming Defense here. They don't, alright, perfect. So, Steel Leaf Champion down, and now we have 
Chupacabra in the graveyard for the Mending of Dominaria. Ooh, Sky Sovereign, console flagship is gonna be an issue here. Killing our Branchwalker. So our plan against the flagship is to just kill all our opponent's creatures. So they can't crew the flagship. That might be a little bit ambitious here, but we'll have to try. So our best draws here include a Thrashing Brontodon to deal with Sky Sovereign and on tap land so we can play Muldrotha. Oof, and a Heart of Kirin as well, so opponent with two vehicles here. But they do only have one card left in hand. And there's the Eldest Reborn. Alright, so we can just play Eldest Reborn. Our opponent only has the one creature they can sacrifice, they can't crew in response. And then we have to hope uh, they're out of creatures in hand. Sounds like a plan. And then we might as well attack for three. Alright, so we're definitely in a bad spot if our opponent has a three power creature here to crew one of their vehicles. If they don't, then we can certainly turn the corner. Yep, there's a J Light Ranger, so our hope is that it finds two lands. It does not. It finds a Steel Leaf Champion on top. And yeah, now they can hit us for six with the Sky Sovereign. Next turn, play Steel Leaf, do the same. And we have to top deck our way out of this one. So Sky Sovereign gets crewed, can attack and kill one of our creatures as well. And then we'll be taking lethal next turn in the air. Opponent goes after the Dusk Legion Zealot instead of the Champion of Wits. So we're down to two. And opponent has to discard to the second chapter. But it doesn't really matter given that they have a Steel Leaf Champion on top. And the Rishkar's expertise as well. And our draw step was just a Blooming Marsh, which is not going to cut it here. Our only out is that our opponent somehow does not attack us with the flying vehicles here. So we have to represent something like a Vraska's Contempt. And I'm not going to attack with the champion in case we need to chum block the Jade Light Ranger here. And here even a Vraska's Contempt would not necessarily do it since our opponent can crew Sky Sovereign with the Steel Leaf Champion. And if our opponent goes to combat, then Sky Sovereign kills Champion of Wits and our opponent's attacking with two lethal threats. And if we were to Vraska's Contempt before combat, then they can simply crew the Heart of Kirin with the Sky Sovereign before the Sky Sovereign gets exiled, and they still have two lethal threats. Alright, let's go to game two here. So after seeing all those vehicles, we definitely want an additional Brontodon. And let's see, Frasco's Contempt seems solid. And Chupacabra seems okay as well. Don't mind bringing in one Spyglass for the vehicles, and I imagine our opponent might have some other uh, targets as well, such as maybe some Planeswalkers. And then probably don't want too many Fatal Pushes, since most of our opponent's creatures were convert mana cost 3 or greater, so those are a bit trickier to kill. But it does still kill a Heart of Kirin, which is fine. Journey to Eternity seems a little bit too slow for this matchup. Mending might be a little bit too slow. I do like one Aldous Reborn. Uh, Liliana might be a little bit vulnerable to the flying vehicles from the opponent. But Vraska can just destroy artifacts, so that seems fine. And I don't mind cutting one Walking Ballista since it's pretty hard to kill uh, the opponent's creatures with it. Maybe another Aldous Reborn is better than the second Ballista. Yeah, I guess I'll try another Eldest Reborn here instead of the Ballista. And try this configuration. Would like to be on the play. And this hand seems okay. So probably gonna get a Swamp with the Evolving Wilds to enable the Catacombs, although then we don't have double green. So it's actually not trivial which land to get here. I guess we still get a Swamp. Really want these to come into play untapped and we're not gonna get an island, so... Swamp it is. And turn to Branchwalker. Finds Fatal Push. Don't have a way to enable Revolt. The reason to keep it is that we don't have a removal spell in hand currently. I mean, I suppose we could keep it and then discard it to the Champion of Wits if we have to, but I think I'll put it in the graveyard for now. Turn to Heart of Kirin makes me regret putting the Fatal Push in the graveyard, but Harvester is a nice answer. I think we just attack for 3, play Champion of Wits, over playing the Harvester here. I'm fine taking a hit from the Heart of Kirin for a turn. And here we can definitely just discard something like a Branchwalker. 
Ooh, Scarab God is pretty spicy as well. Definitely discarding Branchwalker. Could also just get rid of Muldrotha, keep the Scarab God. Since it's a bit cheaper, we can play it on turn 5. And then maybe just reanimate Muldrotha with Scarab God. Seems fine. So next turn we can go Blooming Marsh Harvester, and then on turn 5 play Scarab God. There's Jade Light Ranger. Finds Seal Away and Scatter Groves. So it will be able to crew Heart of Kirin. Let's see what they do with the Seal Away. Alright, they decide to put it in a graveyard. And let's see if they attack us for 4. They would be taking 5 on the way back. Alright, they decide to stay on defense with the heart instead. Which makes sense, so... Our play is pretty straightforward, can't really attack into the heart. So we'll just play Harvester and say go. Alright, so our hope is that they don't have something like a Cast Out or Exalance Binding to answer our Scarab God and that the Scarab God can take over. There's already two juicy targets in our graveyard that we can get back. Alright, Thrashing Brontodon's fine. Can eventually blow up the Harvester, but not right now. Alright, Feathered Pool's a draw. We're just gonna jam the Scarab God and hope to untap with it. And not gonna make any attacks with the Harvester yet. Even though we could cash it in to maybe just gain 3 life. But I'm actually fine if our opponent spends their mana killing it with the Brontodon. Also puts an additional creature in the graveyard for a Scarab God, which if the Scarab God survives could be useful. Alright, Angel of Sanctions is gonna get rid of a Scarab God unfortunately. So wouldn't be able to untap with it. Alright, so it's time to find our spot removal here. Vraska's Contempt would be excellent at exiling the Angel. And no attacks from the opponents. Alright, let's untap, see what we draw. Just a Swamp. So let's cycle the Feathered Pools. I'm gonna keep up the green mana in case of a Brontodon draw. Alright, Muldrotha's not a bad one. Can't play right now. But uh, next turn we can play Muldrotha plus play land in the same turn. Which is pretty sweet. We might take a beating this turn, but hopefully we can uh, stabilize soon. Heart of Kieran gets crewed. And the uh, two flyers get in there. Here I'm gonna crew the Harvester using the Branchwalker, since I would rather get the Branchwalker exiled by a seal away as opposed to Champion of Wits. And I actively want the opponent to use Brontodon to blow up the Harvester here, since that will put a, an artifact in the graveyard for Muldrotha. So this works out. We will take 7 in the air, but that's okay. And Steelleaf Champion a follow-up. Alright, they're adding quite a bit of power and toughness to the board here, so hopefully we can stabilize. Scattering Surveyor the draw. We're just gonna run out Muldrotha here. And then we can still play a land out of the graveyard. And I think we'll play the Evolving Wilds. And then get a forest. And then no attacks for now. Alright, let's uh, hope Muldrotha survives for a turn. So we can get some more value out of the graveyard. But we're definitely in a bit of trouble here. Getting hit for 7 in the air is going to kill us in 2 turns. Heart of Kirin gets screwed. So we might just see the Flyers get in there. Alright, so we take 7 down to 6. Next turn we will be able to get back the Harvester from the Graveyard. And Lyra Dawnbringer, another powerful Flyer. Alright, time to draw some removal spells here. Even if we gain 3 from the Harvester, we would have to block the Angel of Sanctions, which our opponent should probably have played Lyra before combat, since Angel of Sanctions is indeed an Angel, so gets pumped by Lyra Dawnbringer. But yeah, even if we gain 3 from the Harvester, our opponent's now dealing uh, 9 damage with the other two flyers since we can't afford to block Lyra, otherwise because of first strike we don't gain the life. So yeah, block a 4 power creature, still take 9, and we go up to 9 thanks to lifelink, so Harvester by itself doesn't do it, so we need to top deck something here. Alright, Thrashing Brontodon, kinda counts. So we get to play Brontodon to help us blow up the Heart of Kirin, and then still play the uh, Harvester from the graveyard as well. So that works out, and then we can still play a land from the graveyard as well. So play Harvester. Gain some energy, and then play Brontodon. 
and we could technically survive for one turn here. Still don't think we can make any attacks since we need to keep Muldrotha back on defense to block Steelleaf Champion. Let's see if our opponent's out of uh, heavy hitters here. Ixalan's binding. Nope, they weren't out of heavy hitters. So now they can just exile whatever, since we needed the Brontodon to blow apart of Kirin. So even if we blow up the Ixalan's binding here, that's not going to be enough. As long as they attack with all their flyers, including Heart of Kirin. Yep. So we're going to take Exaxes here. Yep. So we can destroy Ixalan's binding. Crew Harvester. And then block one of the four powered flyers and still take lethal despite the lifelink. So close one against green white mid range. But uh, our opponent did drop pretty well here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And I don't think we can keep a one lander, unfortunately. So let's go to six. And this is a keep. Alright, so lots of cards that interact with the graveyard. Do we want to keep Evolving Wilds? I guess we do. Do we want to get up to 5 mana? And it's a pretty free land since on turn 2 we don't have any action. Turn 1 Lateral Elves. Play Evolving Wilds, say go. And this is probably going to get a Forest since we do need double green for the Mending and some other cards. Turn 2 Steel Leaf Champion, yep. All right, let's get our forest. All right, Scarab God's not a bad one. All right, so I think we need to Champion of Woods. Don't think we'll have time for the Benefaction, but we'll see here. All right, two lands. Probably don't need to keep both of them. Could keep the Evolving Wilds to enable Revolt. So now that we drew Scarab God, I suppose we can just get rid of the Mending. And then next turn go land plus benefaction and turn 5 play a scarab god. It's probably fine. And there's a branch walker, that's fine. Finds Hashrap Oasis. So we're gonna take some damage from the Steel Leaf Champion here. And a green belt rampager, which they can play twice. Instead they decide to keep up one mana, maybe a Blossoming Defense seems the most likely. And we did actually top deck Chupacabra, but the fact that our opponent didn't play the Rampager a second time heavily implies they have a Blossoming Defense. So do we run out the Chupacabra anyways? It's probably still worth it, although it would not let us play Scarab God next turn, which plays a bit better into Blossoming Defense. So I think what we do is just play Benefaction this turn. We could catch our opponent tapped out and then play Chupacabra on the following turn. Wow, we actually just straight up bricked. No creatures, no enchantments, just lands, instant sorceries and artifacts. Eh, and so unfortunate. Also doesn't put any food in the graveyard for Scarab God. So that was the worst case scenario. We'll play the Evolving Wild, say go. Yeah, the chances of not finding any creatures or enchantments are pretty low when looking at the top 5 since about half of our deck is creatures or enchantments. Resilient Kenra. So this could be the turn where they play a Galta. Opponent's attacking, I think we have to chum block. Can't afford to take all this damage. There's Rampager again, and they're gonna resolve it. Still keeping up one green mana for defense. Let's get a Swamp. And the Scarab God might just be too late here. So play Scarab God, opponent can attack us with everyone, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we th still take lethal. So we're forced to play Chupacabra, they use defense. And then we have to chum block the elephant and we still take lethal. So we're dead no matter what if they have the defense. Alright. Just play Chupacabra. Kill the Steel Leaf. And yep, there's a defense. All right, let's go to game two here. So how do we want a sideboard against green aggro? Against this version, I don't mind Fatal Push. Don't mind Yohani's expertise, since their opponent does play a few mana creatures and small creatures we can kill with it. Contempt is great, another Chupacabra is great. And then Eldest Reborn is okay. Not amazing, can definitely take out a Benefaction since we don't have a ton of time in this matchup. 
Brontodon is okay since the opponent likely has a few vehicles in their deck as well. Journey seems a bit slow. Harvester is okay. Not amazing. I don't think I want a second copy. Then Liliana might be a bit too slow, even though it does combine well with Chupacabra. Can definitely take out the Mending before taking out Liliana, though. We are also bringing in another 5-drop, which maybe means we should take out a Liliana here. Don't love the Walking Ballistas. One might be okay on the play, it can take out the Lenor Elves, uh, but it's not amazing. Yeah, maybe we're a bit heavy on the 5-drops. Guess I'll take out a Liliana and uh, try this. Would like to be on the play. This hand's okay. So we have a few options as far as sequencing is concerned. Uh, we could hang on to Evolving Wilds to enable Revolt for Fatal Push. The Hinterland Harbor comes into play tapped at the moment. We definitely want to get a Swamp with Evolving Wilds, so that's not going to help with the Harbor. So I think we just play a tapped Harbor on 1, and then next turn we can go Blooming Marsh Zealot, and then on 3 keep up Fatal Push with Revolt. And no turn 1 Lanor Elves. Skittering Surveyor's not bad, but I'm still going to run out the Zealot here. And the Woodland Cemetery is not a bad pickup. So next turn we can play Evolving Wilds, keep a Fatal Push, and then on turn 4 play Chupacabra. Opponent reveals Rampager, puts it in the graveyard. Alright, another Brontodon's nice. So let's play a land, say go. And hope they run out a Steel Leaf Champion here. I'll take the 3. And just another Branch Walker instead. I think we still run out the Fatal Push here. And I'll kill the bigger Branch Walker. And then fetch a Swamp. And it's actually still pretty tempting to play Chupacabra here, since that sets up our Eldest Reborn for next turn. The issue being we don't have a fifth untapped land yet. Could just play Brontodon, play a tap land, which seems fine. Or we can play Surveyor to get a land. I guess we play the tap land plus Brontodon here. And might as well attack for one, opponent's not gonna block. Alright. Kenra pumping Branch Walker, definitely gonna block if we get the chance. Our opponent did get value out of their Branch Walker getting that land. But we just want to keep the board empty for Eldest Reborn. Don't mind running out Eldest Reborn, keep Chupacabra for a more threatening creature. And if they sack Kenra, we can also get in for one. Next turn our opponent will have to discard a card, and yep, there's Steel Leaf. Opponent does not attack with the Elves, that also implies they have a Blossoming Defense in hand. Ooh, but Fatal Push is excellent here, so our opponent has to discard a card. Discards another Kenra. It's actually good value for them later in the game. We're just gonna Fatal Push the Lanro Elves. Since they seem to be stuck on three lands, that works. And now we can play Chupacabra to kill the Steel Leaf Champion. And they won't be able to protect it with the Blossoming Defense. I think we hang on to the land given that we have Surveyor to find land number six. So we might want to cycle the Fetid Pools. And next turn we can get back a Steel Leaf Champion from the opponent if we want to. And Rona's the Indomitable. It's not bad. Alright, let's draw. Evolving Wilds. Let's target the Steel Leaf Champion, I think. And then cycle the Feathered Pools before playing the Surveyor in case we draw something we want to play. Just a Branch Walker. I guess we can sack Evolving Wilds, then play Branch Walker. So we don't shuffle away the card if we want to keep it on top. Doesn't matter a ton which land we get. I guess we'll go for a forest. And then play branch walker. Finds another branch walker. Don't think we need that. So I'll put it in the graveyard. Now we're looking for our heavy hitters. Our planeswalkers, our Muldrothas, Scarab God. Those kind of cards. Another Eldest Reborn would also be pretty nice here. Scrap Heap Scrounger. Into Heart of Kirin, alright. Ooh, Vraska's Contempt was excellent here as well. So now we can attack with everyone, and if our opponent crews Heart of Kirin, we can exile it so they can't block with Ronas either. And I guess we'll play Surveyor first, so that we can still play the land and play Contempt. If we do it in the other order, that's not gonna work. Let's get a Swamp. Attack with everyone. 
and our opponent has to make the first move here since now they can't block with anything and as soon as they crew the heart of Kirin we can exile it with contempt Ronas won't be able to block and all our creatures will get through for damage and that's gonna put the opponent on the back foot so we should be able to close out the game from here pretty easily opponents at three none of their creatures can block at the moment and our opponent scoops it up all right on to game three against mono green splash black aggro do we want to reconsider anything could add the third brontodon but we already have fatal push for heart of kirin so i think i like our setup expertise can be great can also do nothing it's pretty high variance but seems okay can't keep a one lander unfortunately all right we'll keep this one and scry that to the bottom opponent keeps seven and yep, turn one lander elves, we will just be fail pushing this. Don't have a way to enable revolt to kill a three mana creature anyways. And we just picked up a second fatal push, so that makes it easy. Alright, green belt rampager. It's not gonna stick in play for this turn, but next turn it will. Still dies to fatal push. Let's play the forest. Say go. There's Rampager, into Branchwalker, we'll let the trigger resolve, give the opponent less information before we fatal push the green belt. opponent finds a land. Alright. That's on tap, find a Zealot, I think we just run out the Champion of Wits here. And two lands to draw, so we can definitely get rid of one land. And then do we get rid of the second land, or do we discard maybe the Dusk Legion Zealot? I think we just discard the land, might be a little bit greedy, but we do need to find some action, don't want to be flooding out. Alright, let's discard the land, say go. Branchwalker gets in, I think we just trade even though Zealot can also trade off for the Branchwalker here. Just want to keep them low on power in case of Galta and also in case of a uh, Eldest Reborn. Opponent finds a Death Gorge Scavenger, Exiles, Champion of Wits, that's fine. We weren't getting 2-7 mana anytime soon. Second Champion of Wits, alright. So your opponent can easily attack for 4 power with the Scavenger next turn, so wouldn't be able to block it with the Champion of Wits anyways. So I don't mind running out the Harvester here. Give us an extra draw step to see what we want to discard to the Champion of Wits. And makes it more likely that we can go Champion of Wits into Zealot next turn. Scavenger gets in for 4, exiling Fatal Push. And Thrashing Brontal on the play, which can blow up the Harvester here. That's okay. So let's play Zealot first before we play Champion of Wits to give us more info on what to discard. Not our Woodland Cemetery. Alright, time to find those Chupacabras. Alright, so definitely discarding Cemetery. Do we want a random branch walker? Could block the Death Gorge Scavenger, but so does the Champion of Wits and the Harvester. Yeah, I think we discard the branch walker. Hang on to the Fetid Pools. Draw a card right away. And I think we want to keep the Harvester on defense as opposed to attacking with it. Resilient Kenra. Our opponent is almost on empty, so if we can top deck one of our more powerful cards, we can definitely turn the corner. So Scavenger a 5-4. And both creatures are getting in there. And Scavenger exiles Fatal Push. So let's see, what are the implications of uh, Blossoming Defense here, pumping a creature? Then if we were to block Brontodon with Harvester plus Zealot, it would survive. And they would get to kill Harvester. If we block Champion of Wits plus Harvester, then we still don't kill the Brontodon, so we'd have to triple block. And that doesn't work since we have to crew the Harvester. Scavenger is a 6-5, we could just chum block it for a turn. So I think our play is Crew Harvester with Champion of Wits, and then chump Scavenger with the Zealot, and block Brontodon with Harvester. It's not going to kill the Brontodon, but if they use a Blossoming Defense, so be it. And that leaves Champion of Wits in play for maybe a future turn where we can block the Scavenger. Alright, let's go to blocks. We could double block Brontodon. But that's not gonna work out great in case they have a blossoming defense and then we would take six from the scavenger so it's definitely close 
if we double block Bronto on opponent could also just sacrifice Bronto on Harvester. And then the Zealot survives. But I think this is slightly better. So I'll block like this. And then uh, give the Harvester lifelink since don't have a use for it anyways. Alright, they're just blowing up the Harvester anyways. So that worked out fine. Get to chump the Scavenger. Didn't gain any life, but that's okay. We're still at 15. Oof, but Ron also follow-up is pretty devastating. All right, I need to top deck something good here. Branch Walker is not the thing we were looking for. So let's cycle our land first, I think. I guess we don't have super impactful three drops we can play here. So it might be better to just uh, play Branch Walker first. Another Branch Walker. Thought we already put one in the graveyard. Uh, so let's put this one in the graveyard as well. And... I guess we might as well cycle the Fetid Pools in case we draw into a tap land and then draw Muldrotha next turn. Alright. Say go. But this uh, Ronas is gonna take over the board, so we need to find something like a Vraska's Contempt. Scarab God would be pretty good here. Muldrotha would help. Haship Oasis on the Scavenger. Ronas is now active. Can't get a second island with the Evolving Wilds to help us maybe eternalize the Champion of Wits, unfortunately. Pwn gets rid of the Harvester. So this is attacking for 7, this for 5, and don't really want to block the Kenra since if they have a land they get to eternalize it next turn. Double chum blocking also feels pretty bad. I guess we block with the Champion of Wits since at least we have an extra toughness on the Branch Walker which could be relevant with Ronas' Trample. So I'll block like this, and if we draw an untapped blue source, we can also eternalize Champion of Wits, which could be okay. <laughs> and Galta the follow-up. Yeah, we're not beating those top decks. Alright, let's uh, get a land, I guess. Fatal Push is a little too late here. One land short from getting back Champion of Wits. Yeah, that's gonna wrap things up. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand's okay, not amazing. Cemeteries both coming into play. Tap doesn't help. Um, only the Zealot does an early play. Bit heavy on the fives. Yeah, I'll keep. Opponent gets Island from Evolving Wilds. Swamp is an okay draw here. Let's just play Zealot and next turn Brontodon on curve. So let's play our Dusk Legion Zealot. Draw a card. And Ballista's not bad. Alright. And a Sulfur Falls. So we're opponent on blue-red. No place, it could be some form of control. Let's get in for one with the Zealot. And I think I prefer playing the Surveyor over Brontodon here. Since I would rather get the land and our opponent might not uh, counter the Surveyor anyways. Since it's a pretty low value target. Alright, so now we get to get our island. And then maybe next turn play Walking Ballista or Brontodon. Alright, opponent on Grixis, so heavily implies some form of control. And as foretold, alright, it's uh, an interesting addition. Could destroy that with the Brontodon at some point. Don't think we have to do so immediately. So we could run out Ballista for two instead, I guess. Brontodon making sure it resolves is probably better. And then we can blow up the as foretold after an attack. And uh, we can keep it in play for a turn or two while we get some damage in with the Brontodon. This turn they could cast something like a Fatal Push or an Opt for free. But unless they can enable Revolt, Fatal Push doesn't kill anything important. And I'm fine if they have a free Opt. Alright, let's untap. Evolving Wilds is not bad. Let's attack for five. So now I think we want to destroy the As Foretold, play Ballista for one, play Evolving Wilds, next turn play Mending, or uh, Gear Hulk, and then we can get back the Brontodon eventually with the Mending. Yeah, I don't think I want to let my opponent untap a second time with As Foretold. And I'll do it now before playing the Ballista in case they have a Fatal Push they can play on the Ballista. Syncopate for two. Alright, it's okay. It's a little bit annoying since it gets exiled, so we don't get to get it back with the Mending or Muldrotha. But still have plenty of other creatures we can do it with. So our opponent's definitely on Grixis' control. 
Next turn we get to go for Gear Hulk or Mending. While we keep chipping in with our small creatures here. Alright, Torment of Scarabs. That's fine. Not too concerned about that one. Can even destroy it eventually with the Brontodon if we really care. But now our opponent's tapped out. So I think we just discard Fatal Push. Could also just lose 3 life, which is probably not too relevant against this kind of deck. But I don't think Fatal Push is going to do much for us. So I'll discard it. Another Zealot. So I think we just go for Gear Hulk here. Apply more pressure. Force them to have a Sweeper effect. And let's see, how do we distribute the plus one plus one counters? We want to keep Hour of Devastation in mind, as well as Sweltering Suns to an extent. So if we put all four on Surveyor, it can survive Hour of Devastation, but that's a bit worse in the face of an Abrade, destroying the Surveyor. So I think we just don't play around Hour of Devastation and instead try and deal as much damage this turn as possible, and maybe play around Sweltering Suns by going I guess 2 and 2 it keeps the Surveyor alive. Seems fine. Yeah, maybe putting everything on Surveyor would have been fine. Also plays a bit better around Fatal Push and plays around Hour of Devastation, which now would be pretty devastating. Although we do get to follow up with Mending, which is pretty good. So I don't know. Pretty close decision there. It's difficult to uh, say without knowing the opponent's deck list. Alright, instead it's a Yohannes Expertise, close to Sweltering Suns here, as far as the effect is concerned. They could also have some follow-up uh, spot removal spells to finish off some of our creatures. We'll see. If they also have uh, Sweltering Suns, they can just clean up the board. And a Doomfall, making us exile a creature. So I guess we just exile the Surveyor. Since Gear Hulk going to the graveyard is pretty valuable with the Mending and Muldrotha. So now we'll just lose 3 life. And draw, find Evolving Wild, so let's attack for 4, and then play Mending. Opponent's down to 2. Mending resolves, and ooh, Scarab God's a pretty good one here. Is that better than Brontodon? Yeah, I think so. And then play Evolving Wild, say go. And we should be able to survive something like a Torment of Hailfire, so that's not really a concern. Ooh, instead it's a Nickel Bolas God Pharaoh. Alright, it's pretty good here. It's gonna have to kill the Gear Hulk, or they can plus and hope to get lucky. But that's pretty risky. So they probably just have to kill the Gear Hulk here, yep. That's okay. Sack Evolving Wilds, get a Forest. And then just lose 3 to the Torment. I suppose we could just discard the Dusk Legions out since we're gonna tap out for 5 and 6 drops the following turns. Alright, let's get rid of the Zealot. And here we'll return the Gear Hulk. Seems pretty good. And then could just go Muldrotha plus Evolving Wilds. Seems okay. Get immediate value. And they both threaten lethal. Muldrotha survives a braid, which can be relevant. So we'll play the Evolving Wilds out of the graveyard. Might as well sack it now and get an additional basic. Alright, let's see what our opponent does about Muldrotha. Next turn we're also going to get a whole bunch of Evolving Wilds back with the Mending, which is pretty sweet. Nicol Bolas pluses, what did they exile? The Eldest Reborn, wow, it's actually probably our best card against us here. So that'll get rid of Muldrotha for free. Yeah, that's a pretty good one here. Opponent plays a land, so they can now activate Arch over Aska to draw a card. Alright, so now I think we just take the damage. Want to keep lands in hand for a Nicol Bolas's plus ability and return a whole bunch of lands. We could have cycled the Fatted Pools in response to also get it back, I suppose, but I think this is still fine since we want to keep lands in hand to discard two Nicol Bolas's plus one ability. And given that we just picked up all these Evolving Wilds, we can wait until next turn to play Scarab God so we can maybe play him and activate in the same turn. And then instead we get to play Gear Hulk here, which as an 8-8 survives Nicol Bolas's minus 4. Resolves, put the counters on itself. I guess maybe playing the Fetid Pools is still okay, given the fact that uh, we'll have to discard a card to the Alice Reborn as well, so 
they can just go discard with Eldest and then make us discard two cards from our hand. So I guess in that case we might as well just play the Fetid Pools. Cycling it doesn't really accomplish anything if we have to discard our hand anyways. Alright, I'll play the Fetid Pools, say go. And then discard the Journey to the Elstraborn. Alright, let's hope our opponent didn't pick up a removal spell for Gearhulk and that they don't top deck any of our good cards to deal with our own Gearhulk. There's not too many answers to an 8-8 creature. Maybe Nicol Bolas's minus plus another damage-based removal spell. I suppose another Doomfall does it as well. Cut to ribbons, yep. Alright, that's fine. So now Nicol Bolas's minus is my guess. But then next turn we can play Scarab God and activate in the same turn to get back the Gear Hulk to make sure our opponent doesn't get it back with the Eldest Reborn. Alright, so it's going to be very important for Scarab God to resolve here. Otherwise this game's going to be over. And Argyle's Bloodfast is okay. I guess our opponent gets to transform it next turn, maybe gain some life in the future. Alright, let's uh, sack these Evolving Wilds to get our final basics out of the deck. Keep one to enable revolt, perhaps. Lose three to the torment. Dusk Legion Zealot to draw. Yeah, we don't have enough mana to bait with the Zealot. Play Scarab God and still activate, so I'm just gonna run out Scarab God here. Hope for the best. All right, that resolves. So we have to get back the Gear Hulk right now before our opponent untaps with the Eldest Reborn. So let's do that. And then probably just put all the counters on itself again and say go. So at least Eldest Reborn's not gonna get anything here. Bloodfast transforms. Nicol Bolas pluses finds Liliana that's Majesty. It's not bad here, but not good enough if they don't have anything else. They will play our Liliana. Can make a zombie, but it doesn't deal with the Gear Hulk. If they have removal for Scarab God, and then get it back with Liliana, that would be pretty savage. Doomfall. Alright, so I think we just have to exile Scarab God. It's scary giving up on the Scarab God here, but if they don't have an Abrade or a Contempt for the Gear Hulk, they're just dead to it. While the Scarab God doesn't win through the zombie token. Alright, let's uh, hope for the best here. There's also no fuel for the Scarab God in the graveyards anyways. So it's just a 5-5 that keeps on coming back, but doesn't win through Liliana making zombies. Opponent does make a zombie token. And even if they sacrifice a zombie to the temple, they go up to 4 and still die to the Gear Hulk, which will definitely be attacking our opponents. And alright, opponent scoops it up. On to game 2 against Grixis Control. So what do we want to bring in here? Negate seems okay, the rest seems okay. Can take out those fatal pushes. And then Nissa seems great. Eldest Reborn is okay, not amazing. Get rid of the Chupacabras. Could also bring in another Harvester. Yeah, I don't mind this configuration. Contempt could also be okay. To exile opposing Scarab Gods and Nicol Bolases. So maybe that's better than a random benefaction that maybe gets worse now that we brought in more cards that it doesn't get back. So I'll, I think I'll try this. Could be a mistake to take out Eldest Reborn, but I just think our other 5 drops are probably just better in most circumstances. If your opponent has exactly Nicol Bolas in play, of course, Eldest Reborn is going to be pretty good. This hand's okay. Bit slow out of the gates, so it doesn't really punish your opponent for keeping a slow hand themselves. But that's how most sideboard games are going to go. Alright, the rest is not bad. Don't need to play it right away prefer to play it the turn before or in the same turn as we try and deploy a powerful threat and we couldn't play it on turn one anyways here so evolving wilds is going to get a swamp and there's treasure map maybe could have also brought in the third brontodon but it's not like we're up against blue white where they have a ton of enchantments just cards like ascanta and treasure map and maybe a bloodfast here or there i guess we could duress them now maybe snipe a doomfall before they cast it all right, what's their hand? Lake Lame, Duress, Torment. So Lake Lame is pretty scary at seven mana, but it is pretty far away. Um, can just steal one of our Planeswalkers. 
which is a scary part, but we can also destroy it with Vraska. So if they lay claim Liliana, we can play Vraska afterwards and destroy it. So I think we just take the Duress, prevent them from taking one of our Planeswalkers and uh, give them less information to work with. And if they want to play Torment on 4, they won't be able to use a treasure map. So next turn we can go Catacomb into Champion of Wits. Alright, opponent's going to Field of Ruinous right away. Pretty aggressive. Doesn't really matter what we get here. Guess we'll get a Forest. Opponent can still scry with the treasure map. I guess we could Benefaction before playing the Champion of Wits, get some more info on what to discard potentially. Alright, just the Dusk Legion Zealot. That's fine. And we put a Harvester in the graveyard for Muldrotha in the future. Opponent scries with treasure map. So here we just want to make sure to keep hitting our land drops and uh, try to win with our Planeswalkers. There's a Torment, that's fine. So one unknown card left in hand. Lose some life. And uh, Blooming Marsh is not bad since we can play that this turn since we don't need the extra mana. So play Champion of Wits. Alright, those are some cards. So we could keep the Brontodon plus Journey combo, which is pretty tempting. And then just discard Dusk Legion Zealot and a land. That might be okay. And then play a Blooming Marsh, say go. So next turn we get to play Brontodon, turn after Journey, sacrifice Brontodon, get back Brontodon, destroy either Treasure Map or Torment. If the Treasure Map is still around, go from there. And Trial of Ambition is fine. Sacrifice Champion of Wits. So your opponent has a one unknown card besides the Lake Lame. And they're two turns away from Lake Lame unless they want to transform Treasure Map and sack a bunch of treasures to it. But they're not going to Lake Lame the Brontodon when we have mana up. Torment of Scarabs lose some life. And Muldroth has a nice pickup here. Alright, let's play Brontodon. And we're going to hope to be able to untap and then play the Journey next turn. We are giving the opponent the opportunity to activate Bloodfast a bunch of times or to transform Treasure Map here. But in the long run, if we can keep looping Brontodon, that's going to be worth it. And of course, if our opponent tries to lay claim Brontodon, we can just blow up the Bloodfast in response. So they're not going to go with that play. So we have some very good leftovers in hand. A land would be nice, letting us play our 6 drops, but even just transforming the journey gives us an extra land. Opponent's gonna transform treasure map in main phase, so they probably left the card on top with the scry last turn. Hopefully they didn't draw Nicol Bolas here, since that could be annoying. Alright, looks like our opponent's gonna activate their bloodfast, that's fine. So as long as we can resolve journey, we should be in good shape. Opponent plays the land, says go. Alright, so Torment, lose some life. So I think we want to attack first with the Brontodon, and then do the journey thing. Which I think is better than playing Liliana in the spot. Play journey. Alright, we got there. Sag Brontodon on the Bloodfast. Transform journey. Get back Brontodon. And we can sacrifice the Brontodon again if we want to. But I, I think we can keep the Brontodon around for now. Keep him as an answer to Lake Lame for when we play our Planeswalkers. Opponent sacks a treasure to draw a card. Whoa, this could be Nicol Bolas. Instead, Lake Lame on the islands. Oof, that might, that might have been a misclick from the opponent. They probably wanted to Lake Lame or uh, land here instead, but misclicked on their island. We would have been able to destroy the lake claim anyways, and our opponent's gonna shame concede here. That's unfortunate. Would have liked to play out this game, but with the land here allowing us to get back the Brontodon and then eventually play out some Planeswalkers, I think we would have been pretty favored here. All right, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day. 
I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content patreon is the place to go. Thank <laughs> you.